Right, morning everybody. Morning. Yeah, this feels very strange. <laughs> it's, 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 it's good to be here. It's you know good to be speaking in front of a live audience rather than speaking to a screen. It really is. Um, well, I want to start by reading a passage of scripture. If you've got your, your Bibles, you can turn. You can turn with me. It's found in John chapter eleven. A, a very well well-known passage of scripture, if I can just get it up here, I need my glasses. So, I'm going to read from verse 17 to 27, in John chapter 11. Here we go. Now, now when Jesus came, he f- he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near, near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console, console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now... I know whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. So we've got an extract there of the very famous story of the raising of Lazarus from the, from the, from the dead. And, and it, but, but I've deliberately chosen to, to read the part before he was raised from the dead because actually I believe that is that is the most important part in the middle of that Jesus says I am the resurrection and the life and that to me is the key part of the passage it's Jesus Jesus is said the focus is on Jesus there. I am the resurrection and the, and the life. Re- raising Lazarus from the dead was actually merely a sign pointing to that. It wasn't the most important part. It was a fantastic sign. It was a fantastic miracle. It was wonderful. But it was still only a sign to what Jesus was saying I am the resurrection and the life. And I want to tr- focus this morning in on resurrection, li- resurrection life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he proved it by raising Lazarus from the dead. He couldn't have proved it in a more relevant, immediate, immediate way than, than that. You know, it's the thing itself that's important, not the sign pointing to it isn't isn't it you know if you you don't say oh let's go down the m1 and and visit that sign that says london 100 miles you know that that would just be, be stupid you know you go to london you want to go to london you want to see the sites you know the uh, you know buckingham palace houses of, houses of parliament tower of london it's london itself that's important not the sign pointing to to, to london then the sign still is important. It does have its own value. You'd never get there if it wasn't there. But that's its role. It's to get you there. It's to point the way. It's not the thing itself. And in this story, the raising of Lazarus from the dead was a sign pointing to the way to Jesus who was and who is the resurrection and the, and, the, and the life. It was an amazing miracle, but its importance was found in that it, it, pointed, it pointed people to Jesus, not that it pointed people to Lazarus. 
Actually, in, in John 12, in the very next chapter, you do find that people are coming to see Lazarus. They come to Mary and Martha's house because they want to see Jesus, but also because they want to see, they, they, they want to see Lazarus because he, he'd been raised from the dead. But they become, they're coming because of what Jesus has done. And, and so much so that the religious authorities, the, the Pharisees, who were already plotting to kill Jesus, already plotting to kill Jesus, decided that they wanted to kill Lazarus. In verse 10 and 11 of chapter 12, it says, So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. Lazarus was a, was, a, was a brilliant sign. that So much so that they wanted to get him out of the way because so many people were coming to Jesus because of him. They weren't worried about Lazarus' fame. It was the fact that, he, that what had happened was bringing people to Jesus. And it, was, it just seemed to be, seemed, seemed to be getting, getting worse for them. Lazarus was a, a, a fantastic sign. He was bringing people to Jesus through, after he was raised from, from the dead. Just by being there. You know, I want my life. I want my life to be a signpost to Jesus like that. That just by being there, I'm pointing the way to Jesus. That my whole life, in what I do, in what I, in what I say, in my very presence, is a signpost to, to, to Jesus. In Mark 16 and verse 20, it says, it says that they, meaning the disciples went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. So they preached the word and then there were signs and wonders following that to confirm that. That's what Jesus did in this story. He preached the gospel to Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. And then he followed it up by raising Lazarus from the dead. And that's what I want to do too. This morning, you know, I'm preaching, I'm preaching the gospel. And I do, I want there to be signs following. In, in, this, in this way, that there becomes in my life and in your life and in anybody else who may hear this message, more and more evidence of resurrection life. I want to be full of resurrection life. I want my whole life to be a, a signpost to Jesus. I want to live a life that is full of the good things that Jesus offers so that others see it and are attracted to Jesus and want the, 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 the same, the same things, things too. So let's talk about this, this resurrection li life a bit more. In the passage we read, it's, it's shown that Martha sort of had a, a set understanding about resurrection that really wasn't quite right and Jesus needed to, to, to come in and, and teach her a, a better understanding. It was an understanding built upon Jewish teaching and tradition. And, and actually it's an understanding that, that, that's very prevalent today even amongst many Christians and amongst many believers in, 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 other, in, in other religions. She expresses it in verse 24 of, uh, of chapter 11 when she says, I know he will rise again with everyone else on the last day. That was her understanding. Martha, that, 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 that Lazarus, he, he, was, he was dead now, but at some point, somehow in the future, he would rise up again and he would go to heaven. That, that was her basic understanding. So, in other words, you know, you know, you, you, in general terms, you're born, you live, 
you die. And then if you've done things right, you're going to be raised up, you're going to rise up and you're going to go to heaven. That's what uh, that's a general view now, you know, whether in whatever religion you belong to, you know, if you've been a good Jew or you've you've believed in Jesus or you've followed Allah properly, that's the sort of hope that you have. That after you die you're going to heaven. But Jesus, he wanted to change that mindset of, of just living a life, dying, and hopefully going to heaven. He says, resurrection is not something you are waiting for, but it's, it's here and now. He turns it completely upside down. He says, I am the resurrection of the life. He says, the resurrection is found in me, and here I am now. Resurrection is now. Resurrection comes through Jesus. Not by correctly following your religion or, or, or anything else. And Jesus is, is, is offering, offering it now. It's not that you die and then are raised. You actually need to be raised first before you start living. It's resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Not the other way around. The resurrection came first and then came, then came the life. And if you lay hold of this, Jesus says that you shall never die. That you'll be raised to life and you'll never die. So what Jesus is saying really is even though physically we're going around alive, really we can be dead. You know, Physically mankind is going around alive. Like, but we, we're a bit like the walking dead. And we need resurrecting. And, but then he says, once that happens, you're not going to die. Phys again, physically you may die at a point in time. But re in reality, you just go on living and you transform from one phase on earth and into a heaven. So heaven becomes a continuation of what is happening on earth. So Jesus is talking about a totally different kind of life. He's not merely talking about a physical life. He's talking about a spiritual life. Which is a lot more real and lasting than a physical life. And he says you need rising, raising from the dead. But once you've done that and you will live and you will live forever and you'll, 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 you'll never die. In the Lord's Prayer... It says, uh, it says, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And by participating in resurrection life, what, what we're doing is we're bringing heaven down to earth. We're bringing heaven down to earth. And we're having the life of heaven here on earth. At different points in the scripture, and, and, and I'll just give you... Uh, a couple of examples Ephesians 2 and 5 Romans 6 and 11 and Colossians 2 and 13 for example if you wanted to look them up the scripture tells us that although physically we're alive we're in fact dead in our sin we're dead in sin but now we've been made alive again in Christ We've got resurrection life. And in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 22, it tells us that in Adam, all die, but in Christ, all are made alive. We, we died in the garden, in Adam, when Adam sinned. But we were raised again in Christ through the cross. We've been made alive again. Jesus himself says, 
that this, this was the whole reason why I came. I have come that they might have life. Resurrection life is it's the life that Jesus gives. And it is now, not at some point in the future. He came to give us life now. Romans 8, 17 tells us that we, we are heirs of God. We Jew an inheritance from God. Be careful with that. We Jew an inheritance from God. That's an amazing thought. Then an inheritance only comes into effect after somebody has died. It's there waiting, but it only comes into effect after somebody after somebody's died. But Jesus has already died. Jesus has already died, so we've already come into our inheritance. We've already got it. We've already inherited resurrection life. It talks about that in Hebrews 9 and verses 15 to 17. That's the argument that the, the, the author to the Hebrews gives. So let's start living the life that we've already inherited. The resurrection life that Jesus, Jesus gives you. But at this point, there's a sort of a question that comes to, to my mind that, that, that might be asked. If we've already inherited it, if we're already enjoying eternal life, if we've already got resurrection life, what's the difference going to be when we get to heaven? How's heaven going to be going to be better if we've already got it now? You know, if all I in a sort of negative way, if all I get when I get to heaven is more of the same stuff that I've got on earth, I think I'm going to be disappointed. The difference is not in the life that we're going to receive when we get to heaven. We've already got the resurrection life, but it's going to be in the absence of of all the rubbish and all the stuff that we have to put up with and all the things that, that, that gets us down. It is going to be in heaven. This, the scripture tells us there's going to be no more pain. There's going to be no more su suffering. There's going to be no more sickness or disease or, 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 or death. All that stuff that we, get all, that, we, that we get in this world is going to be done away with. We'll have the same life, but we won't have the other stuff with it. Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. There won't be trouble in heaven. We won't have that same, that same trouble. In James, James 1, in James 1, it did... James talks about every good and perfect gift that comes down from the Father of life. God only gives us good stuff. God only, any, anything, God only gives us good stuff. And, and, and he's given us the goodness of, uh, uh, of his resurrection life. And all the rubbish that we get in the world is not from God. And it will not be there in heaven. Jesus, in, in the verse that I just quoted, that in this world you will have trouble, Jesus also said in the second part of the verse, but, but I have overcome the world. The problems of this world need not overcome come us. Need not overcome us. We can overcome them in the power of resurrection life. But we won't have to be those same overcomers in the same way in heaven. So Jesus offers us this, mar this marvellous resurrection life. Now. But what do, we, what do we have to do to move into it? What do we have to do to take advantage of it? What did Lazarus do? Well, not a lot, really. He just, you know, the scripture didn't tell us he was doing this, that or the other. He was just there. He was there enjoying the life that he'd been given. And that's what God wants us to do. 
He wants us to enjoy the blessings that he's been giving us. But one thing that Lazarus did do, and one thing that he had to do to enjoy that life, is that, we, that he had to come out of the grave. He had to walk out of the grave. And we need to do the same. We need to, we need to come out of the old ways of death and walk in the new ways of the Spirit. We need to come out of the grave. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes the circumstances of life seem to pile on top and, and, and crush me, and, and, and I seem to be, you know, I can be going under them, and, and sometimes they, they, seem, they can seem to drive the life out of us, can't, can't they? You know, and, and we can say, I, I just don't feel alive. Um, you know, and I, and I feel like I, I, I'm dying under this pressure. We, I, you know, we, we seem to be buried under them. I'm just buried under the, the problems of, the, of this life. Like Lazarus, Jesus tells us, he calls us out of the grave into the newness of resurrection life. Whereby the circumstances can change. And whereby we can be invigorated. And empowered to produce our own change. And to overcome these, circum these circumstances. The circumstances of life needn't bury us. If we, if we come out of the grave and move into resurrection life. But also... Coming out of the grave into resurrection life is not obeying the law. That isn't what it's, what it's about. Jesus does not give you ability to fulfill the law. He does away with the law. It isn't about, now I'm in Jesus, I can obey all the rules and regulations and do right and I, I, I'm good. In Colossians 2 and verse 14, it, see, it, sa it says that Jesus cancelled the record of debt that stood against us with all its legal demands, the, the, the law, he set it aside, nailing it to the cross. He did away with it. In Romans 8 and verse 2, Paul describes the law as a law of sin and death. It makes us aware, aware of wrongdoing and it leads us to death. But Christ sets us free from it. So resurrection life is not, is not obeying the law because that just leads to death. That's being in the grave. That's being in the grave. The law leads to death, not life. In, Paul says that in Christ, we are dead to sin. Now if you're dead to something, you're not aware of it. It doesn't affect you. But we're alive in Christ. All trying to... to all trying to keep the law or the moral code or what I'll be a good person or whatever, it makes us aware of sin and it leads to failure. But if we fill our lives with the goodness of God, if we fill our lives with resurrection life, then that becomes no effect on us. So I'm not saying that Jesus is saying, oh, do any old thing. Anything goes, nothing matters. Not, I'm saying, with resurrection life, if we're filling our lives with Jesus, those things just, just fade into, into insignificance. We keep the, we keep the law, we, we, we actually keep the law almost without realising it. Because... Because of our, our love for God and our love for others spurs us on rather than trying, trying to, to obey this rule and that, regu that regulation. Finally, what does God want to resurrect in you? 
What does God want to resurrect in you? What does God want to re- resurrect in me? I've got three, three suggestions here. Firstly, a resurrection of identity. So that you know who you are. You know who you always were from the very beginning. From the foundation of the world. That you don't allow others to belittle you or to put you down. That you don't put yourself down and say that you're useless or you, you're worthless. That you, you, you're of nothing are of no reputation. But you view yourself as you really are. As a child of the living God. As a, as a beloved child of the living God. That is the apple of God's eye. So that you walk with your head held high. Knowing. Knowing that God is for you. And because of that. Nothing can stand against you. Let there be a resurrection of identity that we know know who we are, that we know who we always were. Secondly, a resurrection of hopes and dreams. What are, the, what, what are your hopes? What are your dreams? What have you always wanted to do with resurrection life? The, you know, the... the um, those things that perhaps faded away that can come back with resurrection life out of your true identity you can see that you were made for great things you weren't made for nothing you were made for great things God made you with great things in mind that you would start doing the works that God has prepared for you before the foundation of the world. As it says in Ephesians 2 and 10. That the things on your, in your heart that may be buried deep away that you've, you've almost forgotten about. That you, you, you've put to one side. That with the passage of time and, uh, 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 and the... The onset of circumstances have become buried within you. But, but deep down they're still there. Deep down they're still there. That they would come to the fore again. And that you take them up and you would see them fulfilled. You know, what, what's on your heart? What do, what, what, what do you want to do? You know, more than what does... Not just what does God want you to do, but, 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 but what do you want you to do? Because the things that are in your heart are placed there by God. Those desires, those deep desires, whatever, the, whatever they are, let there be a resurrection of hopes and dreams. And finally, let there be a resurrection of heart and mind and soul. That you'd find within yourself a new attitude. A new zest for life. Uh, a new determination. A new resolve. A new desire, desire for, for, to, to see things change. A new love within your heart. A new contentment and peace about you. A new joy in all that you, all that you do. Even in the mundane. So that you're not just trying to get through life. And get from one day to the next. As the best you can. But you, as Jesus said. You're living life to the full. You're living that abundant life. A, li- a life. That seems worth living. Like perhaps maybe it never did before. That you'd be filled with purpose. Not out of duty, but out of freedom and love for God and for for others around you. Let there be a resurrection of heart and mind and soul that we live life to to the full. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life.
That resurrection and life is for now. It's not for some time in the future. Jesus is, is here now. It's not for when you get to heaven. Come to him. Come to him. And come out of the grave. And let there be a resurrection in all of our experiences that will lead to a real newness in our lives. Amen. Amen.